Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That is wonderful to see all of you here this morning, especially on such a really cold day. Uh, feel free to stay and hang out in the warmth as long as you'd like today. Uh, at least it's nice and, and cozy in here. Uh, we'll begin our worship in just a moment, uh, but as a quick reminder to um, to those of you who are newer or um, or haven't been in a little while, Children's Chapel will happen um, when we start to sing the Gloria. So right in the right in the beginning of the service, after the opening acclamation, if you're looking in your bulletins, when we sing the Gloria, at that point you'll be able to follow um, one or both of our acolytes out, um, and we'll have Children's Chapel, and then they'll they'll come back in before. Now, I'll invite you to enter into a brief moment of silence so that we can prepare ourselves collectively, one body, mind, and spirit for worship. Red Books of Common Prayer. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Savior Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord.
reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they have no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of the world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and turn in your hymnals to 693. We'll sing just as I am. Let's do verses 1 through 4. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. So for those of you who were here and remember from last Sunday, we talked about how it was Call Sunday. Uh, we heard uh, our Old Testament lesson 
Samuel, who was called three times in the middle of the night by God, and uh, it took him and Eli, who's the priest who watched over Samuel, um, those three tries to realize that it was God calling. Uh, we also saw how Jesus was able to see and call various disciples um, in the Gospel of John and what that call means to us. Today, we continue on with that theme, and it's a direct continuation, though not linearly in our Gospel readings, because now we're hearing from Mark, not John. Um, but we have a continuation of that call theme and idea, only today I might call it Response Sunday. So we've heard the call, now what is the response? What do we do with it? Uh, Georgia, uh, who was baptized last Sunday, had a fantastic response to a call. What are you being called to, and how might you respond? Now, there is one word in this gospel reading that I want to highlight for us and um, maybe help you think about what it might be that you need to be called to or that you might be called to, um, and that word is repent. I don't say that because I think all of you need to come up and bow down and, uh, and confess all of your sins before me or before God and berate yourselves in order to find your call. That's actually probably not the best idea of what repent actually means and should move us towards. Repent in that Greek and in other languages as well uh, is, is a turning. It's to turn. Now, there's multiple, the Greek language is beautiful, and there's multiple ways that, multiple words for the English words. Okay. So we have turning, we have to turn or turn around, uh, which is different from the turn around that's within <coughs> repent. So it's not a physical, I'm going to move my body and turn, uh, though maybe a physical action is helpful. Uh, this repent turning is a mind, body, spirit turning. It is the soul turning away or turning towards. Now, this kind of turning can happen in really big, life-changing ways. It can happen through a confession type of repentance where you recognize the ways that life has gone horribly wrong and that you have a big change to make. Or it can happen in really small daily life sort of ways. One of my, um, one of my repentances is often um, around TV because long days happen and I come home and instead of Reading a book, not it doesn't even have to be a, a like theological book, but just any book, which is what I really want to be doing. I'll instead turn on the TV and watch something mindless and just keep on watching and watching. I'm not saying TV is bad and that I need to repent from watching TV. But sometimes when I'm doing that, I am ignoring what actually would be fulfilling me. Reading my book, resting, doing something else that is life-giving to me. There are times when watching some mindless TV is a really good thing to do. Uh, there are also times when that might be something I need to repent, return from. When those little things in life start to distract us or take us away from the movement that we should be doing to better ourselves, to bring our souls closer to God, then we need that moment of repentance, of turning ourselves so that we are moving in the direction that God is calling us to move in. 
so this morning as we hear Jesus say, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is not, again, necessarily a major repentance. It might be small. It might be remembering that this good news, the kingdom of God being near, is real. And if you feel like you can't see it or feel it, then maybe a bit of repentance is needed. Maybe a bit of turning away from whatever is blinding you, distracting you, pulling you from being able to see and access that kingdom of God. Maybe that's what you need most. So I invite you, as Jesus is inviting you, to believe in the very real fact that the kingdom of God is, in fact, near. It's within reaching for each and every one of us. What ways might you then need to repent so that you can walk into it? live into that promise, and then share it. Amen. I'll invite you now to stand, and on page 358 in your red prayer books, we'll say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people continue on page 392. In peace. We pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael 
our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Ashley, our rector, Marguerite, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Seeger, Sammy, Connie, Martha, and all others on our parish prayer list. And you may add your own petitions, either silent or aloud. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And please add your own thanksgivings, either silent or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Polly Miller. And please add your own petitions. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. continued reminders that we are um, very busy for the next couple of months and so please please do keep up with your calendar so you don't miss anything um, but first I do need to bring just a few things to your attention because uh, next Sunday at 9 a.m. is our annual parish meeting we want as many of you as possible to be there so that you all can both celebrate everything that has happened in the life of our parish over the past year and what we're looking forward to uh, yet to come. Also ask any questions you might have, give feedback. It's a great way to just get um, connected and oriented with what's happening around here in the life of the parish. It's great for those of you who are newer to the church as well because it gives you a good idea of, um, of what's going on here. Uh, we'll also be electing our next vestry class. So uh, we have three slots open uh, and three vestry elect candidates. Um, Rick Joy and CJ Howell, who were here at 8 a.m., and Laurie Green, who is here um, this morning at 10.15. So those are, unless we have any other floor nominees, those are going to be our next vestry class and representatives. Um, and 
we need all of you, as many as possible, to affirm that, uh, elect them, and let them begin their work in for the next three years. Um, that is happening 9 a.m. next Sunday. Also, Ryan, who's with our kids right now, uh, will have them again at 9 a.m. next Sunday. So if you have children, uh, Ryan is planning some activities for kids and teens who can help with those activities or hang out or be in the meeting. So uh, we have good places and spaces for our entire parish to be at 9 a.m. next Sunday. Uh, February 4th, the Sunday following, is our ministry fair, which is a great follow-up, um, and you can go deeper into things that you hear at the, uh, at the annual meeting that you might want to know more about. So all of our ministries will be represented. If you have not yet, if you are a leading or participating in a ministry of the parish and don't know if your ministry is being represented in the fair, see Carol Felty. If you know it's not, see Carol Felty. <laughs> And, um, and then we'll make sure that everyone uh, has, has space and uh, can, be, can be speaking about all that we're doing in this church. Um, in, your, in, your, uh, in your bulletins this morning is information for the multi-estate estate sale that's happening. If you have questions or want to give donations, um, just contact Lisa uh, Vickers, who would be happy to help. And if you need her contact information, uh, let me know. Last thing, many of you know Seeger Gravit, who is the former associate at All Saints. She was here for many, many years. Uh, she is right now in, um, in BB General Hospital and would love to see people. So if you would like to go and give Seeger a visit, she would welcome that. Uh, stop by anytime. Uh, and I know Joyce has been spending some time with her and helping her out too so um, I don't mean to single you out Joyce but also I know that uh, uh, you may have more answers than, than I do as, as well right now so um, okay walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God
B begins on page 367 in your Books of Common Prayer. 367. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. that Christ died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our service continues on page 365 in your Books of Common Prayer. We'll say together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, fill your hearts and minds with the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. We'll sing our recessional hymn, which is number 64 in the Lift Every Voice and Sing hymnal. <laughs> 